All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay, the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi invites top American CEOs to invest in India. Prime Minister Modi addresses first India-Caribbean Leaders Summit, urges them to join International Solar Alliance. And Tinga Prime Minister says Mehul Choksi will be extradited to India once he exhausts his legal options. Bulgaria's Kristalina Georgieva appointed new International Monetary Fund Chief. And in women's cricket, India to take on South Africa in the second T20 match in Surat this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has invited top American CEOs to invest in business-friendly India. Mr. Modi also urged them to leverage the Startup India innovation platforms to formulate solutions for the entire world on challenging issues. If you want to invest in a market where there is a scale, come to India. Invest in startups, come to India. If you want to invest in one of the world's largest infrastructure ecosystem, invest in urbanization, come to India. Chairing a roundtable with 42 global CEOs and top executives from across 20 sectors, Mr. Modi stressed on continued political stability in India, predictability of policy and pro-development and pro-growth policies. Mr. Modi also spoke about removing laws which have little use in the present business environment. We have removed more than 50 ये तो अभी शुरुआत है अभी लंबा समय आगे बाकी है इस सफर में भारत के साथ पार्टनरशिप करने के लिए ये पूरे विश्व के बिजनेस वर्ल्ड के लिए गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी है ही एम्फसाइज ऑन टूरिज्म प्लास्टिक रिसाइक्लिंग एंड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट इनिशिएटिव्स एंड टू एनहांस द बिजनेस ऑफ एमएसएमईज स्पेशली दोस व्हिच क्रिएट मोर अपॉर्चुनिटीज फॉर फार्मर्स एंड एग्रीकल्चर the CEOs appreciated the efforts made by India in striving towards ease of doing business and lauded Mr. Modi for taking strong decisions and making India more investor-friendly. The business leaders also mentioned that the companies remained committed to India's growth story. Participating companies had a combined net worth of 16.4 trillion US dollars, of which 50 billion dollars was in India. The roundtable was attended by the top executives of IBM, Coca-Cola, Google, and others. Commerce Minister Piyush Goel was also present at the meeting. Prime Minister met the leaders of the Caribbean community and the common market during the first ever India CARICOM Leaders Summit in New York last night. The meet focused on fighting climate change and increasing India's participation with the grouping. A statement released by External Affairs Ministry said that Mr. Modi announced a 14 million US dollar grant for community development projects in the CARICOM and another 150 million line of credit for solar renewable energy and climate change related projects. Leaders and representatives including from Antigua and Barbuda, Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago attended the meeting. Mr. Modi invited them to join the International Solar Alliance and the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. Reiterating India's firm commitment to strengthen its political, economic and cultural engagements with CARICOM, the Prime Minister recalled the presence of more than a million strong Indian diaspora as a vibrant and enduring link of friendship with the Caribbean. CARICOM leaders welcomed the Indian initiatives to strengthen cooperation and reassured full support from the respective governments. Prime Minister held a series of bilateral meetings on the sidelines of the 74th United Nations General Assembly in New York last night. These include meetings with the Prime Ministers of Belgium, New Zealand and Armenia and President of Estonia. In his meeting with the Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, Mr. Modi stressed on the need to considerably enhance the volume of bilateral trade and investment. He discussed bilateral ties during his meeting with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. During the meeting with his counterpart from Belgium, Charles Michel, the two leaders agreed to intensify efforts on early conclusion of negotiations on the bilateral investment and trade agreement and enhance closer cooperation on counter-terrorism, multilateral institutions and migration and mobility. Mr. Modi's fourth bilateral of the day was with President of Estonia, Shasti Kaliuliait. The Prime Minister Narendra Modi scheduled to meet Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, Cyprus President 
and Prime Minister of Greece later today. Now we go over live to a correspondent covering the Prime Minister's visit to US, Atul Tiwari in New York. Atul, what are the takeaways from Prime Minister's meeting with business leaders in New York? Yes, the, the the importance of the, these meetings can be gauged from the fact that at Bloomberg Forum, the Prime Minister pointed out to these business leaders that it's the right time to come and invest in India and be a part of its growth story. At the same time, he saw to it that the business leaders came out with positive vibes. He also pointed out at the forum that this is the same forum which has seen to it that the India's FDI rating index has gone up several notches high and in fact it has rated India as the topmost FDI destination in Asia. While talking at the CEO's forum, Prime Minister just repeated the same theme to the leading CEOs. In fact, on about 42 business CEOs from virtual who is who of this sector, they joined the meeting. Big names like Lockheed Martin, Visa, Master, Apple, Google and so on, so on were present there. One common narrative which went here also was that they showed keen interest in making investment in India. And in fact, some of them even met PM on one-to-one -one basis and came out with their investment plans, which is a very heartening sign for India. Yes, sir, Abhishek? Yes, and for the first time we saw the CARICOM India Summit. What are its implications? Yeah, Abhishek, you see, we are living in an interconnected and interdependent world. Caribbean nations have suffered a lot because of the climate change issues and they have frequently been battered by the hurricane. Hence, they need support. Plus, there is a million strong Indian diaspora in these regions which has been seeking India's support and which has come forward to support India on various platforms. Hence, the CARICOM summit portrays a great future for India and its relations with these countries. Abhishek? Thank you, Atul, for that update from New York. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in his Monkey Bath program on All India Radio on Sunday at 11 a.m. It will be the 57th episode of Monkey Bath. The program will be broadcast on the entire network of AIR and Doordarshan and website www.newsonair.nic.in. It will also be streamed live on YouTube. AIR will broadcast the program in regional languages immediately after the Hindi broadcast. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, has said that fugitive jeweller Mehul Choksi would be extradi extradited to India once he exhausts his legal options. Talking to media persons in New York last night, Mr. Brown said, Indian investigators are free to come and interrogate Choksi, an accused in the PNB scam. After he would have um, exhausted all of his appeals, you can be assured that he will be extradited. He will be repatriated back to India to answer charges against him. He was allegedly a crook. If we had known that um, the gentleman was a crook, there's no way he would have gotten Antiguan citizenship. He will be repatriated. He will be sent back to India to, to answer charges because he, he brings no value to Antiguan Barbuda. Choksi fled the country and took citizenship of Antigua and Barbuda after the PNB scam came to light. Bulgaria's Kristalina Georgieva has been selected as the new head of the International Monetary Fund. She is the first person from an emerging market economy to lead the IMF. The economist succeeds Christine Lagarde for a five-year term from October. In a statement, she said it is a huge responsibility to be at the helm of the IMF at a time when challenges to global economic growth and trade tensions persist. Gyo Giava said her immediate priority is to help countries minimize the risk of crisis and be ready to cope with downturns. Facebook has said that it does not fact-check politicians' statements on its site even if they might be false. The social network said as such statements could be newsworthy, it doesn't want to act as a referee for political debates. Facebook works with third-party fact-checkers to weed out misinformation, false news and manipulated photos and videos. Facebook's Vice President of Global Affairs, Nick Clegg, said if politicians share previously debunked links or other material, those will be demoted and banned from being included in ads. Back home, National Carrier Air India said that it will connect Temple Town, Varanasi with Mumbai with a twice-weekly flight via Dehradun starting September 28th. The flight scheduled to operate every Wednesday and Saturday will fulfill a long-standing demand of tourists and pilgrims to connect Dehradun and Varanasi with the country's financial hub. The new flights are also part of the Air India's plans to provide connectivity to two-tier 
two and tier three cities with metros. Exchange of programs between Akashpani, Maitri and Bangladesh Betar will begin from 1st of December this year. The Director General of All India Radio, F. Shehriyar, has said this in Kolkata yesterday. In an exclusive interview to a Kolkata correspondent, Mr. Shehriyar said that a memorandum of understanding was signed between India and Bangladesh. In women's cricket, India will take on South Africa in the second game of the T20 series in Surat today. The match will begin at 7 this evening. All India Radio will broadcast live commentary on the match, alternately in Hindi and English, from 6.50 p.m. It can be heard on FM Rainbow Network and additional frequencies. India started the five-match T20 series against South Africa with an 11-run win at Surat on Monday. With this win, India lead the series 1-0. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Tanvi Taneja. Thank you, Abhishek. PM rolls out red carpet for global investors, headlines the business standard, adding flags, democracy, demography, demand and decisiveness. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh warns Pakistan, don't repeat 1971, think of what may happen to POK is a headline in the Indian Express. The Times of India quotes intergovernmental panel on climate change to report sea levels rising faster, Indian cities at high flood risk. The Asian age writes, Andaman may not remain inhabitable on account of rise in sea level and increase in climatic events like cyclone. On the 23-year-old law student who accused Swami Chinmanand of rape, the Tribune writes, Chinmanand the accuser held for extortion. Higher education bill in winter session informs the Hindu. Onion harvests run late by a month. Stoke supply crunch informs the Hindustan Times. And finally, the Times of India reports that drinking coffee may lower risk of getting gold stones according to Danish researchers who did a two-part study. And with that, it's back to you, Abhishek. Thank you, Tanvi. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi invites top American CEOs to invest in India. Prime Minister Modi addresses first India-Caribbean Leaders Summit, urges them to join International Solar Alliance. Antigua Prime Minister says Mehul Choksi will be extradited to India once he exhausts his legal options. Bulgaria's Kristalina Georgieva appointed new International Monetary Fund Chief. And in women's cricket, India to take on South Africa in the second T20 match in Surat this evening. And for details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.